In this video, I'm going to design and build a three-way studio monitor. My design goals are good linearity across all frequencies, low distortion, and good bass extension. I plan to use these for years to come, so I'd like them to look great as well. Really quickly, if you enjoy DIY audio, consider subscribing. DIY audio is all we do on this channel. Using a three-way design will allow us to achieve lower distortion. To start the design, I'll need to select three drivers that will work well together. Thankfully, the Arillic company has already sent over a set of their woofer and tweeters with no strings attached. I'm not affiliated with the company and was not compensated for this video. I was sent their 6.5 inch 4 ohm fiberglass woofer, a great looking driver, and their 2.5 inch AMT. Using their larger AMT should allow us to cross over a bit lower. I'll leave non-affiliate links to these below. To bridge the drivers, I'll be using a 3.5 inch 5 ohm Hi-Vi mid-range dome. I'm going to go with a traditional monitor layout. Grouping the drivers as close together as possible will reduce the acoustic offset. The rest of the time delay will be handled in the crossover. After modeling the woofer's low end response, we have our cabinet volume and tuning frequency. With this info, we can design an enclosure. Bracing is crucial for a quiet cabinet and will be decided on here in just a bit. With all of the basics decided on, I'm now ready to start on the cabinet construction.
now that I have my finished enclosure, I can begin the crossover design. To start this, I'll measure the response of each driver individually. I'll measure both the electrical impedance and the acoustic frequency response. I'll enter this data into software to begin designing the crossover. My goal is to keep the crossover as simple as possible with the flattest response. I'll begin by setting the acoustic offset of each driver. This will ensure proper time delay in the real world response. With second order filters and a bit of padding on the tweeter and mid-range, I'm able to get a pretty neutral response in the simulation. With the crossover complete for now, I can order the parts I'll need. While I wait for them to arrive, I'll have plenty of time to complete the finish on my cabinets.
With the speakers now completed, all we have left to do is confirm that our real-world measurements line up with our simulations. Our on-axis frequency response looks great, as does distortion. You will notice that one of the woofer surrounds was deformed by shipping damage, but as you can see in the AB comparison, it has had no negative effect. This was also confirmed through impedance. My setup here is for demo purposes only. Because these are rear ported, they wouldn't be well suited to being placed this close to a wall. I set these up on a proper desk earlier and they sound great. I also set them up in a traditional two channel system, listening in the far field, and they also sounded great. The Arillic woofer is doing a lot of heavy lifting in the bass. For true full range mixing, a subwoofer would be ideal, but for most other scenarios, these are more than adequate on their own. The mid-range is smooth and laid back. I've listened to this dome as part of the Hi-Vi Swans 3.1 and I really do love its performance. The AMT is very lifelike and non-fatiguing. Because I crossed over higher to the dome instead of a woofer, we're getting even less distortion. I'm really glad Arillic was willing to send these drivers out. I feel they're reasonably priced for their performance and just as importantly, they look and feel great. I may have plans for these available in the near future, so subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date. I'm waiting to hear back from HiVi about the dome. When I hear back, I'll post an update on the community tab. If you like DIY audio, please consider subscribing. DIY audio is all we do on this channel. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.